I gave you three things I believe the Lord gave me. What does it mean to submit to God? Help me out. What does it mean? How do you submit to God? Number one, you submit to His written Word. Number two, you submit to His Holy Spirit. Number three, you submit to people. Uh, that, and most people will agree with one and two. <laughs> but I'm, I'm showing you now why three is right too. First Thessalonians 5.12, We beseech you, brethren, know them which labor among you and are what? Over are what? Over you. Over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now at first glance you might think, well that's making, that's making much of people, but no, it's making much of what God said. People who would be over you in the Lord, their biggest fault is that they're like you. They don't know everything. They can make mistakes. And you may not be able to appreciate everything they say and do. But you must respect the place or elsewise you disrespect God who gave the place. Uh, look in Romans 13 real quick. Romans 13, 1, or they'll put it up on the, the screen for us. Romans 13, 1, Weymouth. Let every individual be obedient to those who rule over him. For no one is a ruler except by God's permission. And our present rulers have had their rank and power assigned to them by him. Doesn't mean everything they do is of God. Verse 2, therefore the man who rebels against his ruler is resisting God's will. And those who thus resist will bring punishment upon themselves. This is, is what the, the Lord showed me yesterday. Uh, those who resist and rebel, they bring punishment or destruction on themselves. The enemy knows this. Uh, go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 5 and 5. You younger, do what? Submit yourselves. Now listen to this language because it's going to come up again. Who's going to submit you? You submit yourself. That's how this works. Submit yourselves to the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with what? Humility. Humility, for God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Same thing James said. Verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Keep going. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Now, now, oh my. Can you see complete trust is involved in this? People have pulled this verse out of this context and said, cast all your care. No, he's talking about submission and humility and casting all your care. Why do you need to cast your care on him when you're submitting? <laughs> oh, yeah, you do. I said, yes, you do. Because you're going to run up against some things that's going to tempt you not to submit. If I don't submit, or excuse me, if I submit to them, I won't get to do what I want to do. <laughs> if I submit to them, who knows how they'll take this thing. If I just yield and follow them, this is where faith comes in. That's what he's saying. Cast all your care about that. Yeah. Over on me, oh. trust me that I'm going to take care of you. Wow. How many think we should keep verses in context? Yes. Yes. Come on, keep reading. Verse 7. Casting all your care upon him. Why? As you're 
submitting as you're humbling yourself. You cast your care on Him, for He cares for you. Keep reading. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. This is in line with our text. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured. This is the answer to the question. Whom may he devour? This is the answer to the question. This is the thing I said the Lord showed me yesterday. Do you need to keep this in context? Verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. If you are proud, God resists you. The enemy knows what happened to him. He knows what happened to him and what's going to cause his, whether he wants to admit it or not, what's going to cause his complete destruction. And so he knows if he can get you to do what he did, you'll be destroyed just like him. Submit yourself. Humble yourself. Cast your care over on the Lord and watch out for the enemy. Right? Because he's seeking whom he may devour. Whom may he devour? Those that resist God and yield to him. In defiance and rebellion, he can destroy. Which is why you're so tempted to have attitude. You, me, every one of us in this earth, the very air, the Bible said the prince of the power of the air, the very atmosphere is permeated with a pull to disobey. And that's why, without even thinking about it, somebody can tell you something to do, especially if they didn't say it in a nice, soft tone. And just say it. Maybe what they told you to do, they had every right to tell you to do it. It's something that you should do. It's everything's right about it. But just when they said, do this, or especially if they said, obey, (laughs) what does your flesh do? Are we ignorant of his device? Then let's not yield to it. Let's stop yielding to it. Go with me to Exodus, please, for time's sake. This is the account, verse chapter 24, where Moses, this is actually amazing. If you haven't read this or read it carefully, I recommend you read it again carefully. It is amazing. God said, to Moses and the elders come up to the mountain and he actually had a meal with them. It didn't say he ate, but they came and they saw him. They saw his form. They saw his, it said it looked like sapphire that he was sitting on. God. This is amazing. And after this Meet and greet (laughs) with God. (laughs) He told them they could stay there and he wanted Moses to come on up in the mountain with him. And for the next 40 days and nights, Moses was there with him and one-on-one, God gave him the plans for the tabernacle, all the articles, the way worship and sacrifice was to occur. I mean, 40 days and nights. And the, and the glory and the experience was so intense that when Moses came down, his face was shining like a light bulb. And it would be a wonderful story, except for what happened with the people before he got back. Anybody remember? Exodus 31, verse 18. Exodus 31, 18. He gave to Moses, when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, 
tables of stone written with the finger of God. Somebody say amazing. amazing. Keep reading into the next chapter now, chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, now how long? Six weeks. Six weeks ago, less than two months, six weeks ago, they saw the glory, they heard the voice, they said, the Lord, He is God, whatever He says to us, that's what we will do six weeks ago. And uh, so Moses delayed to come down. I don't know why you would assume it's such a big delay. He didn't say how long he'd be gone. He didn't know. Right. The Lord just told him, come up here. Yeah. Yeah. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and they said to him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we, what not, we don't know what has become of him. Do you recognize this devilish, disrespectful, this, this Moses? See, whatever spirit you're yielding to, it's going to come out in the way you address people, sure. in the way you act around people. Hmm? Everything you do, it, it can affect the way you, you style your hair. The way you dress, the music you listen to. A lot of stuff people are doing, they're only doing it because they think somebody doesn't want them to. Defiance. So uh, keep reading. Aaron said to them, break off the gold earrings which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. What an idea. Where did he get this? And all the people broke off the gold earrings that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. <laughs> and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And he said, These be your gods, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. What? This is the birth of a new religion. This is how they all start. Every religion of man is birthed out of rebellion. It is. Everyone, if, if, you, could, if you could know the history, every culture, I don't care if it's thousands of years old, there was a time when some of them knew God. But at some point, somebody didn't want to acknowledge God and submit to God, so they, the enemy was right there to give them an idea, like go get all the earrings. Go make this gold calf. It's total rebellion. So they're rebelling against God. They're rebelling against Moses. And uh, he said, these are your gods. When Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Aaron made a proclamation, tomorrow is a feast of, of the Lord. Let's keep reading some of this. Keep reading. They rose up early in the morning, offered burnt offerings, brought peace offerings. The people sat down to eat and drink, rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, go get you down for your people, which you brought out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> Have We're laughing, but it wasn't funny. God is angry. Six weeks ago, the Lord, He is God. Whatever He says, we'll do. He said, they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Now, they've made them a, gold, a molten calf. They've worshipped it and sacrificed there too. They said, these are your gods, O Israel which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. These are your gods? Who split the Red Sea? Who protected them in the land of Goshen when people were dying on the right and left and everywhere? Who? 
then you, you're going to rise up and go, nah, we don't know what happened to Moses or his God. We got us a new God. Can you see their rejection of God was directly connected to the rejection of who he put over them? Disrespect and in rejection. This Moses. These are your God. Keep, keep reading. The Lord said to Moses, I've seen this people. Behold, it is a stiff-necked people. What is stiff-necked? Unyielding. Unsubmitting. He said, leave me alone. That my, why would he say, leave me alone? <laughs> he knows he's going to pray for them. Leave me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I'll make of you a great nation. Boy, it's a good thing Moses wasn't full of pride. Because yeah. right. that might have sounded good to him. Yeah. The nation of Moses. <laughs> he could have said, hey, I'm tired of them too. <laughs> I am fed up. You say up, they say down. I say go and they say no. I say stay and they say no, we're going. Sure, he was tired of it too. Moses besought the Lord. He said, Lord, why does your wrath wax hot against your people? See, two verses earlier, <laughs> the Lord told him it's his people. He said, they're your people which you brought forth out of the land of Egypt with your great power and your mighty hand. Keep going. Why should the Egyptians say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth? They're going to say, you know, you, could, you destroyed them because you couldn't bring them into the promised land. He said, uh, turn from your fierce wrath. Repent of this evil against your people. Thank God for somebody that will intercede. Right. Hmm? Oh, yes, Thank, Thank God. Elsewise, there are numerous situations where all that would happen next is just judgment. That's right. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Don't, don't look at them right now. Don't look at them. <laughs> you remember Abraham? You liked him, right? You liked <laughs> Isaac, Jacob, you remember them? Don't, don't look at them. Right Remember, you swore by your own self and you said, I'll multiply your seed, which that's who these are. As the stars of heaven, all this land I've spoken, I'll give to your seed. They'll inherit it forever. Keep going. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. 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 This defiance this rebellion, it's always been happened with the angels before we ever got here on the earth. It's happened with generations of mankind. It got so bad during the time of Noah. There weren't but eight people on the whole planet that were doing anything except total, full out rebellion and defiance. And notice, the more people rebel, the more violence there is. The earth was filled with violence. Yes. Yes. We've seen it just with these smatterings we've been talking about. People taking to the streets, attacking police, burning up police cars, burning down people's businesses. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. That is rebellion. I don't care what happened, it doesn't justify that. No. Amen. Amen. Doesn't justify that. Yes, sir. And there are some bad things that have happened, but people need to look. At the simple question we asked earlier, what if somebody had just complied? That's right. I want to be like Jesus. How about you? Not like the enemy. I, I want to yield to him. He said, I, I do always those things that please the Father. In Ephesians, if you would. In Ephesians 6. And five, Ephesians 6, 5, servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh and fear with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Now, 
Another way of saying this would be uh, employees and employers. Be obedient with fear and trembling. It don't sound like our society. <laughs> Verse 6, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service. Doing it how? As to the Lord and not to men knowing that whatever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. People don't submit because of pride and selfishness. But also a big reason why people don't submit is simply lack of faith. Lack of trust. We saw this in 1 Peter 5. Cast all your care over on him, talking about submitting, and then resisting the enemy. Phyllis and I had the privilege of serving with Brother Kenneth Hagin Sr. and his wife, Miss Aretha, for 20 years. And uh, the Lord taught us things during that time about submission and respect. And they're great people to, to serve with. Uh, One of the first times that I was uh, helping, I, I was singing and playing in the healing school, and Brother Hagen was teaching there in the afternoons. And um, on one occasion, oh, I've been going, I don't know, just a couple of months, and a, a young lady would lead singing part of the time, and I would lead singing part of the time, and he was getting to the close of the service, and he looked over, and he said, y'all come up and get ready to dismiss and uh, she looked at me and said, well, you, you going to do it? And I said, well, you can if you want to. And she said, well, I don't care. You can. And, and so we sat there and, and, and talked about it another two or three minutes. And he kept closing and we didn't get up and move. Not a long time, but a little while. And he looked over and he said, if I'd known it was going to take you that long, I wouldn't have called on you. In front of the whole crowd. Now, a lot of folks might think, well, that, that's too harsh. I kind of thought it was harsh at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I jumped up and, and I ran up. And, and in, in the future after that, I, had, I actually had a pastor ask me one time, because Brother Hagin sometimes would call me up at the end of the service. And I'd get up and I wouldn't take any time getting up there. I mean, I, I would get right on up there and they would say, man, you, you move when he calls you. Why do you do that? Out of respect for the Lord, yes. it was more than him. Yes. The Lord showed me. I wasn't too happy about it because it embarrassed me. But as I went and prayed about it, and the Lord said, you were being disrespectful to the Lord. Right. Was why I prompted him to say it like that. You needed to be jerked because you're being disrespectful. What else you got going on? It's more important than this. Yeah. Right. Didn't you know the service was about to end? Yeah. This is your job. Yeah. Why aren't you thinking about it? Why aren't you getting ready? Why aren't you preparing? Oh, wow. See, this looseness, yeah. this laxness is disrespect. And when you know it's what you should be doing, what else is it? It's rebellion. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. eh. Mm -hmm. eh. We'll get around to it. And one of the first times that I, I, I did a song in the, their big meeting, their camp meeting. This was even prior to that. He called me up and the Lord gave me a song. It went well. This was one of the first times I'd ever done anything like that. And him and Miss Aretha, after the service, they came back in the back and I was there and Phyllis was there. And they both commended me. They said, that was a good job, Keith. Man, you did a good job. And I, I don't know why I said it, but I said, uh, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. And they both looked at me and said, it better be sooner than later. Wow. Well, I thought that was unnecessary too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, <laughs> but again, why would you loiter around and drag around and mess around if you could get to it quicker? Right. 
Why wouldn't you do the best you knew how? See, it's not a matter of just giving them respect. It's a matter of giving the Lord respect. And when you're talking about submitting to people who are over you in the Lord, I, I did respond quickly after that, and I did make some changes. And, and I, we did love the Hagans, but we weren't doing these things just because we love them. Right. We're doing it out of respect for the Lord. Can you see that? We're responding to them because we're doing it unto Him. Make plans to join us for the 2017 Week of Increase with Brother Keith Moore, October 2nd through the 6th at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. Services will be each evening at 6.30 p.m. and children's ministry will be provided. For more information or to join our live internet broadcast, please visit our website, flcbranson.org or call us at 417-334-9233.